There's a right hand drops Taylor. Just like that. He is the pride of the east side of St. Paul. Please welcome Matt the Predator. That's definitely the, the, the end goal is to get a, a world title shot and to win a world title. Now there's another shot. That was a beautiful right hand down Absolutely. the middle. Caleb's oh. got no hitch in his punch and he's trying to close the deal. Wow. Wow. Money is in my way of getting to the goal I just stated before is uh, of a world title. And uh, if he if I'm taking the for granted and he uh, he upsets me, then that, that throws a hitch in my plan, so I can't uh, something I can't do. I, I want to beat everybody in Minnesota that I have to beat to prove that I'm the best and, and he's standing in the way and uh, there's still people that think he's the best middleweight in Minnesota and uh, I can't have that in the back of my mind, man. I, uh, I'm the best, I know it. I think most people in the state know it. Um, it's time for me to let Matt know it and let his fans know it and move forward from there. That's it. That's oh. it. Great move, by Great move from Nelson. Dominant performance by the golden one, Caleb Truex. I love it, man. That's why I do it. You're in the in the wrong sport if you uh, if you don't love what you're doing when you're when you're in boxing because you get beat up and uh, it's hard work, but the reward is uh, is uh, it's a big reward in the end, man. It was great sparring with uh, Derek Finley because he's uh, like I said, is I've sparred with guys that are more talented, fought guys that are more talented as far as skill, but I've never had anybody push me that hard. Um, and apply the pressure that he put on me for for 30 rounds that we sparred. You know, we went eight rounds on Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and six yesterday. So it's uh, 30 rounds in the bank of of uh, pressure and uh, a dude that's stronger than hell and pushing me back the whole time. And it's going to be uh, I expect that to be tougher than the, the fight it, that's, that I'm going to have on Saturday with Matt. So it's a great way to prepare for a man. It hasn't really set in yet. I've been I've been so focused just uh, on the task at hand that I haven't really sat back and thought about it. I mean, uh, after the fight, it will probably sink in. I know. Uh, I know. Once I get to the arena and see all the people, it's it will probably hit me that wow, this is a this is a big fight as far as uh, as far as they go in Minnesota boxing history. Um, but yeah, I just I just been so focused. I haven't uh, I haven't had a chance to sit back and think about the the fight and perspective of. Uh, Minnesota boxing history. So uh, should uh, hopefully after uh, after a knockout victory on Saturday, I'll uh, be able to sit back and reflect a little bit. <laughs> I first did uh, when I first started my career. It's kind of uh, kind of nerve wracking, you know. Everybody coming up to you and asking for tickets and doing this and running around doing that. But I kind of got to the groove where I just disappear for a few days and uh, uh, just worry about uh, worry about my workouts and. Kind of just get in the uh, get in a groove and, and uh, just uh, before you know it, Saturday's here or Friday's here and the weigh-ins here and uh, it's time to uh, head to the convention center on Saturday and get busy. For, for some reason, in, in in all my fights, I can always hear like my my coaches, uh, and it's like the same thing I said before, like tunnel vision. I can always hear like I can always hear Tom, I can always hear Ron. For some reason, I can always hear Tony, no matter where he is. And there's always like a random person that I'll hear, like throughout the whole fight, I'll hear, like say it's one of my buddies, I'll hear him chant the whole time. But uh, whenever, you know, when you're when you're um, having an off round or whatever, and the whole the whole crowd starts uh, chanting, it really picks you up and uh, gives you a little jolt of energy and uh, gets you ready to uh, go back on a run. Scared ice fishing, just to let you know it does. <laughs> yeah, you probably heard it. That's what well, I know you heard it. Yeah, they were at the bottom earlier. Um, I got a message from Quinn. 
The other day, I know you were standing next to him, Isaiah, because I heard you like saying stuff in the background, and it was like two minutes straight of stuff that I could pick out like every third word. He's like, Spear, who wants your business? Fike, blah, blah, someone else's house. Either way, huh? Wait, you got one? Yeah. I don't know, I don't, I'm gonna handle the reel it up. <laughs> I know that handle's terrible. <laughs> a little piker. Oh, piker, yeah. Nice. We got a players here if you don't need to. Sweat out the weight, I gotta lose. How much you have to lose? Probably about eight pounds. Oh, that's not bad. No, that's not bad. In a week? Yeah, that's not bad. You're usually eight pounds, right? Four. Might have to stop and get some of that KO punch. Probably drink that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. yeah maybe not. I don't know. Like, the same stuff. You're gonna, you yeah, have just yeah. as much luck here as you would 100 yards that yeah, way. Same, in the same, same line. Cover. Yep. Yeah. yep. Everything's the same. One. Uh, that's one. One thing I hate about fishing on like Lake Minnetonka. Yeah. We, me and my buddy, go out there. And, and yeah, we'll if you, if somebody sees you catch something, yeah. literally, if somebody sees you catch a fish, they will literally fish like cast onto your boat, basically, <laughs> like go right next to you. And then there's people water skiing right next to it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, good luck Saturday. Thank you, thank you. Oh. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very long either, is it? Really short. Little guy again. Yeah. A couple little guys. Monster. <laughs> That's the way we do it. Come on. <laughs>